and welcome to Clementine Made Me Do It, a sewing vlog from the Maine North Woods in the United States. I want to welcome any new viewers and returning viewers as well. I really appreciate all the comments in the tab below, especially when there can be discourse about problems that I'm having or interests that you may have in a fabric. So I appreciate um, everybody reaching out whether um, it's on the YouTube channel or through my Instagram feed. If you'd like to follow me, you can on Instagram. I am Fiber Trek. There, I post some lifestyle, but mostly things that I'm making or landscape kind of photos. So it's cooking, landscape, knitting, sewing, spinning, um, with a few bits of life thrown in. So, how are you? I hope that you are well. I am just coming out of the um, jovial mayhem of <laughs> the holidays here in the U.S. and I have a number of number. I have two things that I finish, which are non-existent finished items, because they've been given away. They have gone off to live with my niece and my nephew, and I'll talk a little bit about that. I had to re-record this intro for some um, technical difficulties, so. Hopefully that will blend in nicely here. And uh, yeah, so I had not, I just hadn't gotten my camera out. And in fact, the sewing felt, um, it, the sewing surprised me. I was like, oh my gosh, I have to get that stuff done for the holiday. Um, who knew? I, I like to make um, my nephew Christmas pajamas every year. Or I should say winter pajamas, and I like to make my niece the same thing. I make her a dress instead. And I found myself on Christmas Eve sewing frantically to try to get that finished, and Christmas Day to get that finished for her. And um, and so because of some of that kind of deadline work, my other pursuits have kind of gotten derailed. And in fact, I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to work on next. I kind of have that like overwhelming... Um, I don't know. I don't know what fabric. I don't know what pattern. I don't know what I need in my, you know, what were some of my plans? Um, I'll talk a little bit about 2017 later on. And I also just finished knitting a sweater. And that kind of always throws me for a little bit of a loop because I've got to figure out what do I want to work on next? Do I want to go bulky? Do I want to go cables? Do I want to go lace? Like, what do I want to do? So um, I'm kind of at that crossroads in the making where projects have been wrapped up. I've met most of my deadlines. Um, I think with some editing, I'll probably talk about another pair of pajamas I have to make. Um, so this may feel a little uh, disjointed, but I think it should smooth out once I kind of figure out how to make that work. All the same, welcome. You're most welcome. I'm so happy that you're here. I hope that uh, this is going to offer something of inspiration for you. Um, there's quite a bit of fabric, a couple patterns, and a book acquisition. So. Excellent. Uh, let's jump right in and see what happens with this. It's kind of a mismatch of fabric haul, kind of non-existent makes, and um, mostly acquisitions. <laughs> so let's just jump right in. I'll start with what I don't have to show you, right? Um, so I made the Oliver and S sleepover pajamas in the 2T for my nephew. And, I'm sorry, in the 3T. And I did it out of this fabric. I think I may have talked about this fabric before. But he, um, he's so funny. He asked Santa Claus, the one thing he asked Santa Claus for in his letter was a mustache. Because um, he loves to be like his Uncle Rob, um, my husband. And he's a ranger in... Um, in a park here in the, United, in, in the United States, in Maine, and did I tell you that's where I was coming from? Just the Northwoods. Um, so I'm in Maine. But anyway, so he's a ranger, and Cameron kind of emulates him, and he has like a Uncle Rob shirt and pants. Like um, We made him, uh, my husband uh, put together and sewed a traditional Duluth pack and did all the leather work for him, and so I thought these would be an appropriate kind of um, homage to his um, his love for his uncle. <clears throat> so I did this and then I had a cotton print. This is flannel and I had a cotton print which looked like wood grain that I did the facing on the top and the cuffs 
I omitted the pockets of this particular piece. Um, they got a bit fiddly. I didn't like the way they were covering up um, the pattern, so I let that go. And I was able to get those and done um, in time for him um, to wear on Christmas Eve. So that was one thing I got done. The other thing I got done was for my niece. I did the Oliver and S, I think it's the roller skate dress. Um, I forgot to grab the pattern before I sat down, but um, I did it. This is an Irene and Lewis fabric. Um, you've seen this before. I bought it in black for myself. I really love their fabric um, aesthetic. So I did the, it's like a, has like a yoke and then a dress section and then like a um, kind of yoke wouldn't be the right word to describe it, but the hemline is oh, like a, kind of a thick um, border. Um, and I did the contrast in this. So what I love about this particular pattern is you really only have to finish two seams. Hi, sweet girl. Bella. You only have to finish two seams and those are the side seams because everything else is encased so the yoke is doubled and kind of faced if you will or lined and so is the bottom border so you don't have to finish a hem. Um, and I, I perceive that it was going to go quickly. I've made this dress last year for her too and you know I get to like some of the smaller seams like the arms or what have you and it's just so fiddly because they're so little. Um, so I endeavored to get this done for her for Christmas, which I did, um, and sent it off without a button. And it, that, then it came back, and I sewed the button on, and it's gone off today. So anyway, um, I'm, I'm thinking that this can be winter wear. So that's kind of really all I got made. I do need to get another pair of the Oliver and Us pajamas done for a friend's son. Um, he's older. I bought... I think the pattern is, this is size six uh, month to four years, and then I had to buy the five to 12 or whatever. So I bought that, um, and I'm doing him a pair of Star Wars pajamas, so I need to get those cut and done, and then I can kind of refocus um, some of my personal sewing, which has kind of gone awry a little bit. Um, I'm looking at some stuff and I just get kind of overwhelmed, but I'm sure I'll be able to kind of rein in um, my plans once I finish some of these other pieces. Well, I only have one piece left to do, so we'll see. All right, so that's really what I worked on and had made in the month of November, which really isn't a lot, but there were other... Um, I was knitting quite a bit, and then I was also making my um, traditional ornaments that I do every year. So... I don't know why I felt compelled to buy so much fabric when I wasn't making anything, but I just was having, I was on this fabric kick. Um, so I had gone ahead and I had talked to my sister-in-law about my niece and what would be some other appropriate type of um, patterns. Oliver and us had a kind of um, Black Friday sale that I took advantage of, and I picked up the Tea Party sundress, bloomers, and playset pants. Um, and I really like this kind of little piece right here. So I picked that up, and I picked up the after-school shirt and pants pattern. Um, and I then decided, since I was making an order, that I would pick up the, the fabric to do some of those pieces. So let's take a look at what we've got going on here. This might be slightly frightening. So I have been admiring this fabric for a while <clears throat> and I figured since I was making an order and paying the shipping that I would go ahead and um, treat myself and so I picked up, this is, I just saw the salvage, here it is, um, this is 100% cotton, it's um, Make Cower UK and this is their um, Heartwood Scenic piece and what really drew me to this was the owls I've always kind of really loved um, 
that kind of, is it called toile, the, or wall, the kind of bucolic scenes of people and fields that are traditionally blue and white or just red and white. Um, but I loved this even more because it had more of a, na a natural feel versus a kind of a, you know, humans picnicking, which really isn't my style. So I picked this up. Dog hair floor, I gotta be mindful of that. I picked up this new fabric, fabric another 100% um, cotton. And this is Blythe Fabrics and, oh sorry, Art Gallery Fabrics. And this is, <laughs> Blythe is the designer. Or the collection is Blythe, I'm sorry. And I can't read the designer's name. I love the color. And I, th um, I think I want to do a <clears throat> Anne Carolyn smock out of this. Maybe even the dress versus the tunic length. I think I got three yards of this. So what I really loved, I loved the colors, but I, um, and which is funny that this would draw me, but I loved this kind of pop of pink here. Um, Kind of the holographic look. So anyway, I get a lot of compliments on Anne Carolyn smock I made um, from the Great Hunt or the Last Unicorn Hunt or um, that I showed on my first episode, and <clears throat> I thought this would be a nice complimentary piece for that fabric. I also picked up these mittens. This is Dear Stella. And um, it's Ray Ricci for Dear, Dear Stella. And they're just kind of a Scandinavian mitten design. Again, 100% cotton. Happy to work with that. I then found this. This was a Girl Charlie knit. And I found this on fabric.com. It's 95% cotton, 5% spandex. Um, and it feels apropos of my lifestyle here. So I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I think I got three yards. <clears throat> and it's a jersey with cabins and trees on it. So I was thinking I might do a um, Marianne out of that or um, came and went. Oh, well, it's gone. So then for my niece. I, I've been coveting this collection for a while, um, and I know, I, you know, I probably would wear it, but I work in an elementary school, so I'll get away with some of these pieces. Um, this is another Dear Stella um, pattern. It's Ray Ricci, or Ray Ricci, um, but I just love these little <clears throat> woodland scenes. So I picked this up, and I picked up these narwhals, <clears throat> these were on sale. It's like the last bit remnant sale. All of this I picked up from Hawthorne Threads online, except I think maybe the Girl Charlie fabric I got from fabric.com. Um, so these are the narwhals. So I thought this would be a cute little shirt or a pair of pants or even a dress. So these were all kind of predicated on the two patterns that I bought and um, making her just a couple little shirts or something um, that could go with a pair of leggings or what have you. So she's, um, I'm making two tea for her and she's about 17 months. <clears throat> so as also part of that same Woodland collection um, that I showed you of the little animal portraits is this piece. I picked up to do her <clears throat> another little dress. And I picked up, this is another Irene and Lewis. This just came out. And I haven't, I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do yet, if I'm gonna use these together or if I'm gonna make them two separate items. So I picked up this one and I had thought I might use this as a coordinating fabric with this one. Well, this was the real piece of resistance that I wanted <clears throat> for her to do a dress. So I may also just buy a couple coordinating um, fabrics, you know, small calico kind of print fabrics to do with these and then make two dresses versus one dress because I have enough here to do 
you know, I bought a yard of each. I, I didn't pay much attention to, you know, I needed a quarter yard or what have you. So, um, so I picked those up. So that was kind of the fabric piece of this. Um, and nothing really interesting in, by way of apparel fabrics per se, um, except for maybe the knit. I have aspirations to pick up some linen and to do some more work on um, kind of my layering <clears throat> wardrobe. Yeah, living here, I've talked about this before, but kind of um, using the linen as, an, as a mid layer between um, a wool, a linen, and then a silk base layer <clears throat> being, I think, the ideal winter wear for the northern part of the United States. But we'll see. So I <clears throat> probably will end up trying to get those from Clementine. She has a really nice selection of the Robert Kaufman linen cotton blends. Um, and I worked with that for one of my Aunt Carolyn smocks. I know that um, I had received a comment about styling and I'm gonna do my best to, when, for my finished objects, kind of get some video of that or pictures of that to insert so you can see the lengths of those particular pieces. Um, hopefully I can commandeer a family member to uh, help me do that. The other piece that I picked up is <clears throat> going to be part of my 2017 set of challenges. I have set three. One is I'm going to be cutting up my wedding dress, so stay tuned for that. Um, sorry, I just saw my dog was walking along the borderline of the table here, but I thought it was a giant squirrel because there's a door just beyond that, so I'm so sorry. I just had a moment of like rodents of unusual size. They really do exist. Um, so as I was saying, 2017, I'd like to repurpose my wedding dress, and um, I have some thoughts about that. might involve some dyeing, and it also might involve um, some uh, handwork, etc., embroidery work, so we'll see what happens. The other thing I'd like to do is make a pair of jeans for myself, and then the other thing I am doing is I am working on thematically designing my wardrobe and the major theme that I've chosen is kind of shield maiden medieval kind of construction Scandinavian history type of things um, really drawn to the design work of the uh, embroidery and the weaving and the wool kind of aspects of that particular textile culture and so I went ahead and I ordered this medieval garments reconstructed um, Norse clothing patterns <clears throat> so I really love the idea of tabards I like the idea of over tunics again that comes back to kind of that layering um, and I like the cut and the idea of the princess seams and the gores um, that are included in this um, particular type of uh, fashion design so th this book is set up. Um, the first part tells you all about the tools they used to spin the wool, harvest the wool, um, weave the wool, and, and so so detailed in that they can describe to you the warp and the weft, which if you're not familiar with uh, weaving, the warp is the section that goes on the loom, and the weft is the section that you are manipulating um, through the warp threads. So I'm not a weaver per se. I do own two looms uh, and I have woven basic uh, basic weave, which is like one one shed, it's open, you change the sheds, you weave, you open the sheds, so etc. So anyway, I thought that was pretty fascinating and I haven't gone so far as to say I'm going to weave my own cloth and spin, you know, prepare, spin and weave my own cloth, but it's it's possible that January 2nd, I might just decide to make that a goal as well. So we'll see. Um, but this is really interesting. There is a huge clothing find in Greenland, <clears throat> um, and, and, and a number of the textiles were preserved. And so this book catalogs that um, archaeological dig. But the designs that are included in this book, um, they give you a picture of the museum piece and all of the details of it. So this is, um, that gives you the size, uh, the sizing, how much fabric, what you need to cut, how to lay it out. So this was the original garment. And then that, let me see, I can't see. That is the new garment. 
And then here are the patterns. Now this is gonna be my biggest challenge, I think, but I've got my Jedi sewing um, master and I, I'm hoping, um, and she and I are kind of doing this collaboratively and I'm hoping that with her prowess we can translate um, these graft pieces um, and scale them up to an appropriate pattern and draft the actual pattern piece. So that'll be challenging in and of itself. I love this look. I know, it's kind of, I'm kind of a nerd, but see that center gore? And I love the idea of doing this as an underdress and then creating like an Alabama Channon overdress. So you have like kind of the linen um, and, and then you can, you know, have like a princess seamed uh, sleeveless tunic and then you can just change out those tunics, continue to make, you know, use the same underdress and, you know, really expand your wardrobe um, and um, options. So, and I'm sure that, you know, these allow for t some tweaking um, for fit and to modernize them a bit. But anyway, I was super excited about this and I read the, uh, the first section and got a lot of great information um, as far as traditional preparations um, for the fabric, for the cutting, for the seaming, etc. So... Anyway, if you are interested in historical um, fashion or kind of the concept of weaving your own cloth for your own fabric, um, then you have a little extra spending money, then I would recommend this uh, particular book. I think this is a textbook that they use because you were able to rent it. I got it on Amazon. So other little bits and pieces that I've been working on are my... Um, uh, my ornaments and so I have a few of those to show um, these just need their stuffing but it's been great to have some of those embroidery books just for a little extra inspiration I was kind of stymied on what I was able to you know how to put together stitches to create new designs so I really love my bear and another bird and I think you've seen this star before and this horse. So, yeah. The only other thing I thought I would mention before I sign off is I wanted to just throw out a couple other sewing vlogs that I really enjoy and would recommend. You're probably already tuning into them if you have caught a little bit of the sewing, the sewing bug. But um, I have been um, actively engaged with... Um, Gabby of Gabadashery and uh, Sewn with Rosabella. I really love Knit, is it Knit My Style? No, Sew My Style. And also I watch Sew Over It's um, sewing vlog. So those are four. And you know, for added sewing adventure within knitting blogs, um, I would recommend um, Fibertown, who does quite a bit of sewing um, regularly, and I would also recommend um, Vool and Vine, who is um, Yarngasm um, podcast. So those are just a few like kind of branch out recommendations. They're all very different in what they choose to sew. I think that you'll find I'm a little bit basic in my <clears throat> approach and my style and in my garments, um, and these other. Um, makers um, are doing a lot of interesting techniques and working with a very diverse group of fabrics so they have a lot to offer as far as um, kind of informative and educational pieces and talking about their own mishaps and you know where they're um, where they're finding inspiration and that type of thing so I think if you you know I enjoy them because you know I like to see such a all the different types of um, fashion and independent designers and how people take a you know pattern and translate that into their own style um, so I would recommend checking out those gals if you are interested in pursuing um, more sewing pursuits pursuing pursuits does that, does that work anyway I think that's gonna do it for me I'm gonna head over and try to finish up some spinning and some knitting I have to make a cake 
We are anticipating a huge nor'easter on Thursday, and I was going to try to get home to the north, but it's not going to happen, I don't think. It's snowing right now. My husband hit ice on the way up, so tis the season here in Maine. Stay tuned for more on my January adventures, and in the meantime, I hope that you're in good spirits and doing well and doing lots of making. I'll see you next time. Bye.